All right, guys, today I thought it would be an interesting video to talk about what I would choose and kind of looking at overall five companion or survival knife companion knives. Now, what do I mean by a companion knife? What I mean by this is, and not everyone subscribes to this philosophy, not everyone has to, I am not purely religious about having a companion knife, but when it comes down to wilderness living, like actual prolonged wilderness survival or bushcrafting especially, it can be a little bit more important to have something like a companion knife, especially if your primary knife is something larger. So for this instance, we're gonna use this as kind of the model for a typical survival knife. And what you guys are looking at here is an AK or Architect Knives AK 6.5. And of course, the 6.5 refers to the fact that it is a 6.5 inch blade length. And for that, you definitely get a lot of pros. You can more easily baton pieces of wood. You can more easily do larger tasks with a larger meteor blade. And once again, meteor as in, you know, it's about a 3 16 of an inch thick piece of steel. So this is definitely going to be more of an industrious styled knife. And for survival tasks, once again, your primary survival tasks being firecraft and sheltercraft, this is going to be something that really serves to meet those roles quite nicely. So when you look at it in those regards, that is what your chief like survival knife is going to be doing. Now, the unfortunate or downside to that is that say processing natural resources like um, gutting and skinning animals, um, doing things like feather sticking should be able to be done with this knife and you should be proficient with those skills if it's really going to be a survival knife you rely on but by no means is this going to be easy to skin a squirrel with right like this is not going to be what you want to use and so that's where the idea of companion knives come into play and so a companion knife would be would be something like this bark river knives rising wolf where you put this up against the ak 6.5 and you see that you know, I'll try to give you as good of a comparison as I can. Absolutely astounding. Like this whole knife can nearly fit in the handle size of the AK 6.5. And so that is where your companion knife comes into play. Now, today we're gonna to be looking at, like I said, five that I think are really good options. Of course, there are always more than this, and I even have more knives than this, but these are just some of the top contenders that popped into my mind when I'm like, I need a companion knife for that knife. And so these are some of the top ones that I'm just, just like, yep, that's it. So first up, I think the one that almost always pops into up into my mind when I think about a companion knife is the Mora Eldris. And the Mora Eldris, the reason why this one pops up into my mind so frequently is because quite literally the Mora Eldris was designed from the ground up to be a companion knife. This was physically designed with companion knife in mind. This was designed to be the companion to things like the Kanzbul, things like the Garberg. And so this was designed as a very small knife with that one singular task in mind that this is going to be once again, used for very small, very fine tasks, things like food prep, things like um, carving. And so the Eldris really fits that role, in my opinion, very, very well. And the other cool thing about the Eldris is that it's really affordable. And that can be, in my opinion, another deciding factor, not always 100% of the time, but it can definitely be a deciding factor with, you know, say you spend $270, $250 on your survival knife, and then you're like, oh, well, I also want a companion knife. Well, you don't want to go and spend another, you know, $300 on your companion knife, such as a Winkler. Um, and so you don't necessarily want to go spend another, you know, 250, 300 on your companion knife. So going with a 20 to $30 Mora Eldris sometimes makes a lot of sense. Now, the next one up is also another Mora, but I promise it's the last one on the list, but Mora just makes a lot of really good knives in this type of use case, and that this is the Mora 511. Um, this is just a super, super basic knife, and once again, you can get these for around $11 to $15. So, like I said, if you go and spend $200 on a survival knife, going and buying a companion knife that's $11 is pretty darn palatable, and this is a little bit larger than the Eldris, but the 511 is still very compact and once again is going to fit those roles of doing, uh, you know, game processing, natural resource processing, food prop, prep, um, you know, like feather sticking and doing those kinds of tasks very well. Now, next one up is going to be one that I think is pretty cool. It's fairly new, but a lot of people overlook it, especially because Civivi Knives is primarily 
oriented towards everyday carry. They don't really, you know, push towards the outdoor market that much. They really just make EDC folders. But this is the Civivi Knives Storm Ridge. And while it's definitely more tactically inspired because, you know, it's a little bit more, you know, um, like kind of tactical fighting knife styled, this is definitely still going to be a very solid companion knife. Um, it's very thin, as you guys can see here super thin and it is of course full flat ground and what i like about it is uh unlike all of these other knives here this is nitro v so it is going to offer a great deal of rust resistance so once again if you're really looking for a knife that's more well suited to food prep if you're looking for something that's kind of like a paring knife this is going to be do this is going to be able to do those tasks really well but on the flip side this is still a full tang knife so it's like it's not just a basic kind of like pairing knife it's going to be durable and you can push it into hard use tasks but it's also going to turn around and be a very slicey very sharp knife for processing things all right, next one up is going to be the Arminger 4. Once again, staying around that four inch blade length total. This is going to be a little bit more on the beefy side. I think this is like the thickest and most robust that I have in the offerings here. But uh, this one's also made out of ADCRV2, so it's going to be a little bit more tanky. So depending on what your needs are for a companion blade, something that you can run as a neck knife, this might be a little bit much, but at the same time too, it still is like when we hold it up against, once again, what I'm comparing it for, companion size you can see that this thing is still very very small in comparison to the uh, ak 6.5 so i still think it makes sense it's still like a valid option so the arminger 4 is in my opinion a pretty solid one this is another one that especially if you're pairing i would say like i would lean towards this if you're pairing a knife that's going to be more arctic friendly so something like maybe a cold steel srk that has a fully rubberized handle this also has a fully rubberized handle so it's going to make a little bit more sense in arctic environments where it's going to be freezing cold all right last one up and the one that i showed very initially is the bark river knives um, this one is my prototype rising wolf now the R rising wolf is not just a prototype this is a knife that bark river makes but this was one of the first like i said prototype blades out there and so um, this one's pretty cool it's very compact and what i like the most about the rising wolf is the fact that it has because the handle and the blade are kind of you know like together in this area you get a nice full grip on it without it feeling too cramped but then you also still have a good decent blade length which once again similar to the storm ridge you know this is a full tang knife if you need to step it up into those more industrial tasks and do some things like light batoning this will easily do that um, now the disadvantage and the reason why i put the rising wolf at the bottom of this is this is kind of that proverbial $200 knife like this is a knife that if you get a rising wolf they are going to be around 200 bucks and so it's it's one of those like bittersweet things that if you you know go out and you buy you know a 250 to 300 dollars survival knife and then you turn around and buy a 200 dollar companion knife once again i'm not going to say everyone can do that um, some people can some people can't i am once again very into knives i like collecting knives i like the the knife community so i you know of course see to it that i get you know just expensive knives that i do enjoy um, but not everyone's going to feel the same so this is not going to be the most realistic choice so that's why i left it in last place because for me personally this would probably be my first choice of the knives that i already own but but once again, if you're looking at this from a prospective buyer's standpoint, this is probably going to be the least attractive in that regard. So take that for what it's worth. But I thought that these would be some pretty cool options that cover a wide variety of budgets. Most of these are, as I tried to angle, pretty you know reasonably budget knives. So they're not like all of these, but the Rising Wolf are pretty well under a hundred dollars once again like the 511 is legitimately like 11 bucks so it's pretty hard to argue with that and the eldris is also pretty darn affordable at like 25 to 30 dollars but uh things like the arminger are a little bit more expensive but overall um you know like they're all fairly cheap so anyways guys hopefully you enjoyed the video as always god bless and i'm out